practice being what you say you believe. I started this live by talking about somebody who responded to one of my emails, which was eminently kind, and just basically crapped all over me. That person is not being what they say that they believe. They're existing and vibrating and doing and acting from an orientation that is not in alignment with that which they truly seek to be. And the soul's urge always seeks to go higher. The soul's urge always seeks that communion with higher self and source energy. And the communication which comes out of communion, the intimate interaction between two souls, that communication is our prayer. I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship with somebody who didn't see you as you saw them, who didn't see in themselves the greatness that you saw in them, who saw themselves as less than, not worthy of. How can I be, how can I receive approval? What can I do? I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship with someone like that. But it's kind of a trip and that relationship can never be equal that relationship can never be powerful that relationship can never be co-creative not fully not truly because there's not a true communion taking place one of those people is entering into the interaction and the communication like a beggar like a beggar some of us do this in our marriages, some of us do, it, do this in our love relationships and in our friendships. We enter into and stay in these relationships like a beggar, taking the scraps that they give us, not equal, not in true communion. And flip that a little bit, because this has happened to me. You know, I'm not a famous person by any stretch of the word, but I've gone out to events and I've met people and I've seen how they interact with me and they, it, some people interact with me as if I'm in possession of something that they are not. As if I know more than they do. I'm higher vibration than they are. I'm some kind of a great teacher. Like I, I've met people who have talked to me from that orientation and place. God bless them. That's fine. That's where they are. But I can never be in an equal friendship or relationship with a person like that because they don't see themselves as I see them. They don't see themselves as equal to me. They're coming as a beggar to some degree. If you want to have a co-creative relationship with the source of all things, see, that's what God is. He's the source of all things. Miracles. If that's what you want to see in your life, if that's what you want to manifest in your life, you've got to come into that communication and into that relationship as an equal partner because that's what you are. You have to come into that relationship as a friend, as a lover would. Same level. And now we're cooking with gas. Now we are operating on all cylinders. You don't come to prayer as a beggar. You understand that the mechanism of the manifestation, that which you seek to objectify in your reality, to see as an object in your reality, a new love relationship, for example, a new job for yourself, a new number in your bank account. You come to that prayer with power, knowing that you create that. Christ is the conscious, the thinking aspect. The Father, which is the mother, is the subconscious. I and the Father are one, but the Father is greater than me. Nothing comes into this world except through the Father. And you have to know that that exists within you. Within you, you see, is this trinity of creation. Let us make man in our image. God didn't say, let us make man in my image. There were other parties involved. Guess who they were? You. You and you and you, also the archangels, that's another story, but you and you and you. Let us make Crystal Ann Compton in our image. And so they did. And within me, because I am the image of that which created me, within me, fully stocked, is everything I need to also be the creator of my life. See, I come from the source of all things. I'm the child of the source of all things, created in the image of the source of all things. And therefore, my birthright is to create the same in my own life. And it's the power within me, me, and only me. I and the Father are one. Are you feeling that? Do you love that? Can you sense that?
That's how powerful we are. I receive a lot of letters from all over the world, people saying, Crystal, you know, this is going on in my life. I really need help. I get a lot of people asking for help way more now than I ever used to. And I used to spend hours, like a week, just trying to ask, answer all these people, but it's, it's getting away from me, people. But I hear people in the way that they speak. And I, I have to say, you, you gotta change the way you speak about yourself. Just the other day in a private communication with somebody who might be on this broadcast, someone said to me, I have nothing to teach anybody. And I said, ah, what did you just say? Read that back to yourself. I have nothing to teach anybody, and so it is. And so it is, because as a man speaks, so he is. As a woman speaks, so she is. We have to get really clear about the fact that we are in the power position of our lives. We are the ones who are in control of the circumstances and conditions, the relationships and the people, the opportunities and the lack thereof. We are in control of all of that. And until we see ourselves as that powerful, as until we look away from this idea of the wretch, the beggar, crawling to the altar, genuflecting, until we see ourselves as the co-creative powerhouse, well, nothing is going to change. Nothing's going to change, and that's what my work is, to show you who you truly are and show you what's possible in your life. Adopt the feeling of already being that, believing and being our one. So what do you believe in, hon, about yourself? What do you believe in about your marriage? What are you believing about your talents, your abilities, your prospects? What are you believing about this world? What do you believe in about this country? What are you believing about your neighbor, about another race? What are you believing? Because believing and being are one. And from this space of active faith, you are creating your reality, not just yours, but you're also creating mine. Because as you feel it, see, as you imagine it, you telepathically transmit that to me and everybody else. As spiritual people, we got to wake up. As a collective consciousness, we have to change what we're saying, the messages we're sending to our subconscious through the way that we're existing. What if that woman had sent me an email and said, hey, by the way, I thought I unsubscribed, but I didn't. So maybe is there something I can do? Hey, I love what you do. Thank you for everything that you do. Like how much different would that have felt? If she would have occupied the vibration of what she truly wants to be in this world, how much of a blessing could she have truly been? And God bless her. I'm using her as an example. I just want everybody to be cognizant of the impact of the inner world and how it's outpictured in every conceivable way in the objective reality. That which, ex that which exists within you is outpictured, manifested in your world. And tonight when you go to bed, and all your thoughts fall away and the mind doesn't have all the mechanisms to doubt and to keep out the subconscious and the, the voices, the message of spirit, that's when your subconscious, your lover, your mother begins to dance like Peli is doing right now in Hawaii on the big island. She's dancing, man. She's creating destructive too, right? But she's creating. That's the power of your subconscious. Tonight, when you go to bed, you are entering into a magical time, the domain of the subconscious. In order to utilize this magical time, prime yourself. Have an intention. Run through the conversation that Neville taught us tonight in this work. The mental conversation, me and Christy Olison, seeing ourselves the utmost for the highest, talking in the language of our success, spend some time creating in the imaginal mind and feeling it in the belief, in the existence, and send that to the subconscious and boom, go to sleep and let her dance. Let her dance. And thus, we change the world. Mahalo, guys.